rockin' a dummy, ain't Louis Bucket Bitch on the plane with 50 P's and a luggage The bezel on the 41 millimeter flooded With a trauma I love and I know how The new version of Biggie and Lil' Kim um, is that I accurate? love what 50 he's saying. He's, he's absolutely right. Like, I mean, don't get me wrong. It's irritating to see her keep busting shots at me and not paying homage, and then you're going to bust shots at me. That's really irritating, yeah. But I love what he said when he said, yeah, I think Kim is more irritated with the fact that, you know, how the situation is going down, and especially what Puffy is doing. Yeah, he's darn right about that. Puffy look crazy right now. You know what I mean? That's why I said in my books for my show, Puffy, you should be ashamed of yourself. Because at the end of the day, if you're going to rock with anybody that hard, you should be rocking with me that hard. This is 50 that cool. right, If you're going right. to rock with anybody that hard. You know what I mean? And you can't, you can never make another big in Kim. That's not going to happen. It's never going to happen. It, it, like, what? <laughs> you kidding me? It's never going to happen. Like, I don't get it. But... You know, at the end of the day, like, Puffy is Puffy. He will never, he will, I mean, you know, it's all about what he can do, what he can give people. That's it. Puffy is, it's all about himself a lot of times. Because he never really did nothing for me. I mean, when we were coming up, yeah, you know, we had to do things for each other. But, like, I, I judge by what happened afterwards. When I was locked up, and here's where Puffy should feel really bad. When I was locked up, Puffy never put a fucking $10 bill or a penny a quarter in my fucking commissary. He never fucking wrote me a letter. He didn't try to come see me. None of that. I got people like Oprah. She wrote me three letters, right? She, she, she wrote me three letters and sent me three of her favorite books, which I love her to this day for that because those books were so inspiring. And one of them, well, I, I'll tell you the name of the books later, but anyway, you know, Tyra Banks writing me. Mark Jacobs wrote me every freaking day. Every freaking, he told me everything that was going on from his, the, when he first woke up to the end of the night. What, what, what does it take just to say, let me make sure somebody who was a major part of my family is all right. You know, wait, like when you, when you locked up, the one major thing is that, that makes you feel like, damn, this person really loved me and is on my side is that this is when they just take the time out to do one little thing, it's not even the big things that matter because it ain't the money. I was straight in jail. I, 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 mean, I had too much money in my commissary. When I came home, they had to send my money back. It wasn't that. But nigga, you could have fucking came to see me one time. You could have wrote me one letter. Even with the movie, they played the shit out of me with that movie. And I'm still rocking. Even after they played the shit out of me with the movie. And there was some controversy. Rocking. There's some controversy about that. What was your major issue with your portrayal in the movie? Shit, what? My major issue was I didn't have an issue. I didn't have nothing. I didn't have a case. This though. is 50.com. The movie went into green light and all that shit without me even being able to pick who played me. I would have never picked Notori Horton. Nor or what, what's her name? <laughs> Notori Norton. Whatever. I don't know. I'm sorry. I don't want to fuck. She ain't got nothing to do with it. And she, she's a nice girl. She's a sweet girl. I don't really know her that well, but she don't have nothing to do with it. But I would have never picked her to play me. She you kidding me? I'm such a complex girl. I'm made up of a, ga a certain gangster that can't be copied from Brooklyn, and then I'm made up of a certain sexy sophisticatedness that cannot be duplicated. I'm, I'm, I'm a complex person. Like, I know that I have these different sides, and I'm not a fucking angry person all the fucking time. That shit didn't happen in the studio with me and Faith. Faith was the one that was mad all the time. Because I was the, I was the mistress, I guess, whatever, you know? And I used to try to, you know, I Viv was the one who wanted our relationship, and this is real shit. He wanted our relationship to be more public. I was a young girl, so I was a, I, to be honest, you know, I was messing, this guy was married, and at the end of the day, we were together first, so I guess it was being that, like, okay, we had our relationship first. You know, I didn't really know how to deal with that. I was young, you know? I'm not, like, I, if I could do it over, I wouldn't mess with a married man again, you know? But I was young. I was young. So at the end of the day, like, I, you know, I, she was more mad at the situation than I was. Right. And I, when I look back at it, damn, you know, she was married to the dude, but the shit, he was fucking everybody. What the fuck? <laughs> and he was a piece of shit, and I love him, don't get me wrong. <laughs> but he was a piece of shit sometimes, but that's my baby, I love him. But he could be what a man does. This is what men do, you know? So, I mean, at the end of the day, like, 
all that shit in the movie, that shit wasn't, that shit wasn't safe. No, that shit wasn't how it went down. She was the angry one all the time. And not only that, but she used to do a lot of real rap. Like, whack shit, you know? But the thing is, is I didn't have to say so in the movie. And I should have had all the say so in the world because they evolved the movie around me. Miss Wilde is talking about it's not about her. It's not about her. It's not about Christopher. It's not about her. It's about Christopher. This the movie was about me. Y'all, y'all made that movie about me because y'all needed me in order to sensationalize the movie. Okay, I don't care no more. At the end of the day, they played me, and it was a struggle for me to. But after that movie, people, you know, you had some people who really thought that that was me. You had some people who knew that wasn't me, but then you had some people who really thought that that was me. And that was hard for me because I had to, and that's why I did Dancing with the Stars to let them know there's so many sides to me. Oh yeah, when I'm in the hood, I'm gonna conform because I know how to, because I'm a chameleon. You damn right I'm gonna conform because I have to. Because I'm not gonna let people in the hood think that, you know, uh, I don't know how to get down or I don't, I, I don't understand what they're talking about. I grew up there. But I also grew up in New Rochelle in the suburban side when I was young. So I know about that. I can't help who I am, who I am. I don't care what people think. But at the end of the day, I had to let them know, I can still be graceful, Kim. <laughs> and I can do the dance with the stars thing because that's how I came up, too. I, I went to Catholic school. I'm, not, I'm a proud that I went to Catholic school. I love that I went to Catholic school because I know how to pull up. Yo, see, I love a show. It's Power 105.1. Me and Kim in the building talk about the Notorious movie. Now, you just telling me that you, this is the first time I've ever heard you admit that you were the mistress. Yeah, I mean, he was married. That's no secret. And right. I'm not that's not something I'm proud of. I was a I was a baby. Like people think, oh Kim, I've been in this game so long, I'm so old. I'm really not. Like when I came out, I was a teenager. Right. I, that re- you know, like I had to wait one more year till I turned eighteen to sign my contract. Really? Yeah. You were a baby, baby. Yeah, when I came in the industry, I was a teenager. But, you know, my music was so mature, they were afraid to say that I was a teenager. Before you met Big, were you already writing rhymes? Yeah. You already, yeah. you was already rapping? Mm-hmm. Did it, how much influence on your style did Big have? A whole lot. I was Big's biggest fan before he even got big. We used to go to block parties, right? Just, just no. Just is in the <laughs> building with his aunt's brothers. Yes, and every, so I mean, you know, like we would, we would really support him, mm-hmm. like you know, because um, me and uh, me and C's sister were best friends, right? So I knew C's like since he was right, little, little, right, and knew Biggie since before. The deal with Puff and before getting dropped from Uptown and before Bad Boy yep. and we before to, all yep. of that. Was Junior Mafia always in the works for you guys? Was that always something that he was he was going to do? Well, those was his little homies, you know? And so he just wanted to bring them up. Big, Big was just... He just he loved a family environment, so he just wanted to bring them up and have them doing something. He mm-hmm. knew half of them wasn't going, couldn't rap, couldn't you know whatever. But he was right. just like, I want them a part of our situation, and so he always had that kind of vision for that. So you know, early on in your career, how much writing did you do of your own material? Early on, early on, I wrote mostly all of my stuff. Trust to tell you, to tell you. Uh-huh. That's why another part of the movie they made it seem like. He just, I was a robot or a puppet. Like, blah, blah, blah. what? I gets busy. A lot of the time, <laughs> a, lot, a lot of the time, I used to write raps and Big wouldn't even want to write it for me because he'd be like, she could do it. I used to ask him, like when I get late, when I used to get lazy, whatever. Uh-huh. I'd be like, I don't feel like finishing the eight bars. Can you finish them for me? Uh-huh. He'd be like, what? You stupid. If you don't get in that room and finish that daggone rap, I'm not doing it. And then he and I would go in and that pushed me really because mm-hmm. I was I'm really like a really dainty like at eight like when if I was in the studio too long I'm like damn I'm supposed to be shopping right now like I don't want to be you know like <laughs> I'm serious and he used to be like what you better go and finish that you know and then I'll go and finish it or whatever but it's like I the Benjamins all me Big wasn't even in New York for that. You wow. know what I mean? Uh-huh. Get money on me. He used to come in sometimes on now on get money. He came in. He changed up the little things because he didn't. If if I said something that he felt was whack, he'd be like, Nah, you can't say that. Change right. this line right here. <laughs> you know. And then um, I know a question I've always wanted to ask you about mm-hmm. a record that is one of my all time favorites, and most women that I know love this record to death, and it never became a single. It was an album cut. Another. 
with you and Bing. Were y'all actually that well, mad at each yes other? Yes, I was. I, w- I wanted to kill him. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I wanted to kill him. And, then, and, and guess what? That was his favorite song. Right? Remember he used to say, I love that. It was because captured was so, so wonderfully. Real. Yeah. And you I was, wrote that. You were so real. I and, was pissed. And we angry had, and called them all kind of black As a matter MFs of fact, and, let me tell you what happened. Yeah, right? Am I lying, Jess? Am I lying? We got kicked out of the hit factory because we were, <laughs> we was fighting so bad. He brought some all stinky groupies up in there and we and him was together. Uh-huh. And so I'm like, oh, I'm going to get him. Oh, I'm going to get him. So, you know, I had a little shorty come up and come pick me up in the E class. Oh God. And he tried to I mean I was behind the booth literally rapping in my lion just. I, I got the I got my headphones on like this. Uh-huh. I'm like, yeah, you know that <laughs> boom, my headphones on like this. <laughs> and I was like, right? And I was crying. I was so oh, God, scared. I didn't hilarious. know what happened. And he like, you try to play me? You try to play me? I'm like, well you trying to play me? You got all these skinks in here. Wow. And we started fighting and we tore the plaques off the wall and everything. And he choked me out in the elevator, so I passed out. <laughs> and look, and then look. <laughs> and you were still loving this man after all of this. I don't know them. why. I don't know why. I don't know why. But I tell you, sometimes if he wasn't dead, I can't remember. Put it, but I'm not, I love him. That's my baby. But yo, he. Kim, was, how do you how do you feel all these years later when you <laughs> see something come up and and somebody will get. Uh, murdered and then they'll find a person just like this or somebody else will die and they'll find a person just like this and they'll solve this crime and they'll solve this crime do you think that the police just don't want to come to grips with and be honest about who killed big i just think that um they're they don't care at this moment it's, it's gonna cost them too much money you know how that is and when you're dealing with the government and stuff like that and I just think that um, this situation is so deep, deeper than we probably would ever know. the fact that these people, us brothers, myself, oh God, Darren, Kansu, have lived this journey, have been through these experiences, have been through these trials, have learned and have gained success through the formula that we want and wish to provide for you.